In the previous video, we started talking about titrations. And we said titrations are really the same idea as neutralization reactions, except we track them as a function of the amount of sodium hydroxide or strong base added. And we monitor the pH as we're adding a strong base. And if the strong base is added to a solution that contains a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, then we know we get complete conversion to water and salt, neutral salt. So in this type of titration, we said that the equivalence point always comes at a pH 7 because the products are both neutral. So we start acidic, we slowly increase the pH until we reach our equivalence point where we see a sharp inflection that crosses through pH 7. So the equivalence point is always right here, right where it crosses a pH of 7. And you can calculate the pH of any point along the way here if you want to, uh, just using a stoichiometric approach to figure out how much hydrochloric acid has been used and how much remains. So when we talk about titrating hydroxide into a solution of a weak base, things get a little bit different, a little more complicated. Because in this case, we have hydroxide being added into a weak base solution. And let's say we're using hydrofluoric acid. Okay, so you have hydroxide as a reactant, so the reaction is still a stoichiometric conversion to products. We still make water. But in this case, we produce fluoride, which we know fluoride is a weak base. And we know that weak bases produce hydroxide when they react with water, right? So this fluoride will further undergo a reaction where it reacts with water according to our base dissociation reaction to produce HF and hydroxide. So it's gonna to contribute to the solution being basic, okay? So that's only when we reach the equivalence point though. What's true as we are adding it, right? So during the titration is we are converting some of our hydrofluoric acid. It's being converted over to fluoride. So we are taking some of our weak acid and converting it to a weak base. So during this titration, between the beginning and the equivalence point, we're creating a buffer, right? Remember a buffer is a solution that contains a weak acid and its conjugate base. So during this titration, we are creating a buffer. And that actually makes calculating the pH a lot easier. So let's see an example situation here. Um, and then we will plot the pHs as we go along. So here's my titration curve, okay? And we'll say our equivalence point is right here. And remember at the equivalence point, the pH is greater than seven. So if this is 7.0, the equivalence point for this titration will always be above zero because at this, uh, um, for this titration, we are making the weak base, right? Remember we talked about that in the neutralization videos. Okay, and we start acidic because we're starting off with just a weak acid. So before we've added any hydroxide, we're acidic. Um, once we reach the equivalence point, we're basic. And the idea here is that as you start adding hydroxide to the hydrofluoric acid, we have a fairly sharp increase in pH until we reach what's called the buffer range. And during the buffer range, the pH very slowly changes until we reach our equivalence point. When we reach our equivalence point, we have a sharp change, and then it levels out. Okay, so this is the shape of the curve we expect when we titrate a strong base into a weak acid. You have already seen how to calculate the pH at the beginning, right? This is a solution that's only a weak acid. So if, let's say, we have uh, 100 millimolar of our weak acid, and let's say our weak acid is carbonic acid, so H2CO3. Okay, so I have 100 millimolar weak acid. Based on this information and the fact that carbonic acid has a pKa of 
you can calculate the pH of this solution because you know carbonic acid undergoes an acid dissociation reaction and produces hydronium. So this is something that we did when we first introduced weak acids. We can calculate the pH of that solution. As we are adding the hydroxide and we reach the equivalence point, this point right here, that's where we've converted 100% of the carbonic acid to the conjugate base, bicarbonate. And the bicarbonate will react with water in an equilibrium process to produce the conjugate acid and hydroxide, right? Like we talked about up here. So this reaction produces hydroxide, which is why this pH is basic. At this point, we have created the conjugate base and that makes hydroxide. We saw how to do this calculation when we talked about neutralization reactions. All right, but the pH anywhere else, right? anywhere else uh, working up here, anywhere in what we call our buffer region, we can calculate without using ice tables, without using uh, equilibrium constants. All we need to do in this range is to apply what we know about buffers, and that buffers can, we can calculate the pH of buffers using the henderson hasselbalch equation. So pH equals pKa plus the log of our base over our acid. And remember, we can either use concentration or it turns out we can also use moles in this case, which oftentimes makes the henderson hasselbalch equation even a little bit easier. All right, so let's go ahead and use this 100 millimolar carbonic acid and calculate the pH along a few of these points. All right, so here's our situation. We have 500 milliliters of 100 millimolar carbonic acid. And into this, we are titrating 500 millimolar sodium hydroxide. Okay, so just as a quick reminder here, from this information we're given right here, you are able to figure out the initial pH and the pH at the equivalence point. Right? These are things that we have seen before directly. Let's talk about how to figure out a few other points along the way here though, in our buffer region. Okay. Um, so let's figure out the pH when we've added 25 milliliters. So this is the volume added of the hydroxide. So we've added 25 milliliters, when we've added 50 milliliters, and when we've added 75 milliliters. Okay, so from this information, the fact that we've added 25 milliliters of 500 millimolar sodium hydroxide we are able to figure out the moles of hydroxide we added. So as we've seen before and as we know, we have 0 0.025 liters added, all right, that's 25 milliliters here, and the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0 0.5 moles per liter, so this gives us 0 0.0125 moles of hydroxide added. So 0 0.0 one, two, five moles. You can do the same thing for 50 and 75, and you would find the moles added to be 0 0.025 and 0 0.0375 moles. Okay, so this is how many moles of hydroxide we've added. And remember that this is a strong base reaction. If I scroll up here, we can see this reaction again. Right, so this reaction, hydroxide, is reacting with our weak acid, in this case carbonic acid, and this gets stoichiometrically converted to the conjugate base. So what this means is that the moles of hydroxide we've added will be equal to the moles of the weak base that we produce. So from this, we can very easily figure out how many moles of the weak base are present. So moles of base created because they're equal.
right? So we are able to figure out how many moles of hydroxide, which is equal to the moles of the weak base that we produced during that stoichiometric conversion of carbonic acid to bicarbonate. One of the last steps here is to figure out how many moles of acid we started with so we can figure out how many moles of weak acid we have remaining. Okay, so we have 0 0.5 liters, so 500 milliliters, and the concentration is 0 0.1 moles per liter. So this gives us 0 0.05 moles of the weak acid of carbonic acid to start with. If we've used 0 0.0125, we have 0 0.0375 moles remaining. If we've used 0 0.025, we have 0 0.025 remaining. And if we've used 0 0.0375, we have 0 0.0125 moles remaining. Okay, so from this information right here, the moles of the base and the moles of the acid, we can calculate the pH using the henderson hasselbalch equation. So in this case, let's think about 25 milliliters first. We have our pKa was 6.37, so pH equals 6.37 plus the log of the amount of base, so 0 0.0125, divided by the amount of acid, 0 0.0375. So after our 25 milliliters have been added, we're going to see that the pH is 5.89, so about 5.9. If we do the same thing for uh, 50 and 75 milliliters, so this is 25, after 50 milliliters, we'll see the pH is equal to 6.37. And this hopefully should make sense because we have equal concentrations, equal amounts of the base and the acid, so at this point, pH equals pKa. And after we've added 75, plugging those values, these values, into the henderson hasselbalch equation, we would see the pH is 6.89. Okay, so it's not as complicated as the neutralization reaction and the equivalence point. It's still a couple steps. You need to figure out how many moles of base you've added, how many moles of acid remain, and then plug those values into the henderson hasselbalch equation. In the next video, we will look at the profile of these titration curves, right? So the shape of these curves, and we'll figure out how they change as the different acid changes, right? So how would it look if, if this was acetic acid instead of carbonic acid? How would it look if it was hydrofluoric acid instead of carbonic acid?